All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass. It's beautiful April morning. Uh, this is Sugar, and Sugar is a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and today's video is to help you decide whether or not a Chesapeake Bay Retriever is right for you and your family, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the farm here in a little while, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of romp through the creek, and then we're gonna get in the water, and uh, then we're gonna go for a hike, and while we're doing all that kind of stuff, uh, you can kind of compare and contrast this Chesapeake Bay Retriever to some other dogs. So, of course, we're gonna take some black labs because there's my bias, that's what I like, they're my favorite. Uh, but we'll also take uh, that little Jack Russell that was on the four-wheeler with me. And uh, we'll take a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. And I have a new friend here who has a couple of Australian Shepherds. So we'll take uh, those dogs too. And maybe this will give you a good uh, idea of whether or not a Chesapeake Bay Retriever might be good for you. Now I caution you, just because you watch it on my video and it looks cool on my video, that's no substitute for going and seeing a dog in person. All right, so we're gonna walk around out here on the farm, uh, right in my pre-adventure area for a second, uh, just so I can and uh, talk about the uh, Chessie and uh, read a few quotes. I like to read the quotes because, uh, you know, if I don't, then people like to get in that comment section and tell me what I don't know. All right, so we're gonna just walk around and uh, finish, uh, finish pre-fatiguing these dogs. Then we'll go up to the exercise of small challenges course. Then we'll head over to the farm. Come on, dogs, you're very good dogs. Alrighty guys, so for those of you who aren't familiar with my channel, what we're doing right now is uh, we're out in my pre-adventure area and uh, we like to come out to the pre-adventure area and kind of prime the pump for taking dogs off into big off-leash environments where we don't have quite as much control, okay? So what we've done in our pre-adventure area is we've mowed a series of paths and then our mentor dogs, they run those paths on a very predictable uh, pattern and the dogs that are new just kind of fall into that pattern and that's where they learn to follow the mentor dogs around which is what saves us from having to chase these dogs all over the hills and hollers of the bluegrass state when we go out adventuring okay so now before we head off to the farm what i'm going to do is i'm going to read you some uh, descriptions of chesapeake bay retrievers written by people that really like the breed because obviously i have my own biases right you know uh, everybody knows what i think i you know all dogs want to be labs all labs want to be black so i will be as unbiased as i can you know and to be unbiased i will just use the words of people who love the uh, breed okay so these are some quotes that i got so some from orvis some from uh the the, the chesapeake bay uh, retriever club of america right and one from one of my favorite authors uh, richard walters okay so uh, this is a good one he's been called the most rugged retriever the courageous and water-loving Chesapeake Bay Retriever is a powerful gun dog, renowned for his prowess in rough, icy water especially. His keen, yellow, amber eyes draw attention to an upbeat, intelligent face. He's smart, with a notably bright and happy disposition, but he's also quiet and affectionately protective of his people, including the family cat. And his turf, of course. His friendly, if occasionally reserved, demeanor makes him an excellent and trustworthy companion animal. Okay, now I'll give you guys a little bit of insight on how to read descriptions of dogs from people that really like them. When they say <laughs> he's smart with a noticeably bright and happy disposition, okay, sometimes, right? But he's also quiet and affectionately protective of his people. So anytime you hear the word protective, what that means is that they're liable to bite somebody, okay? And you'll see that. I'll kind of come back to that in this video over and over again, right? <laughs> I'll read another one, right? Okay. Uh, the breed was and is first and foremost a dog for water work in harsh conditions. He possesses a love of water, thick coat. Hey, come here. Let's look at you while I'm, while I'm reading. Thick coat, confirmation for swimming, birdiness, strength, intelligence, and perseverance. Okay, I'd say all that's true. Like, look, this is a very strong dog. And when you lay hands on a Chessie, like you can feel the difference in strength between, say, this Chessie and this, this English lab right here. Like this English lab kind of makes you want to like love on him, you know what I mean, and smush him up. He's like, you're like soft. Like this dog, hard as a rock. You know, and one of the things I want you to notice when we're over in the creek is this oily coat of these Chessies. Hey, they'll get down in the water. I mean, she dives head first into the water. And when they come up, they just shake and they're like miraculously dry. All right, so I'll wrap this up pretty quick. Let me just get maybe one more quote here for you. Uh, <clears throat> As a companion, the Chesapeake is a highly intelligent and independent thinking dog. He is very aware of his surroundings and his loyal, loving nature with his family and a good watchdog, okay? So again, let's, <laughs> let's read that description kind of with a, you know, with a, <laughs> 
with an objective I, right? Okay, highly intelligent and independent thinking, right? In other words, they don't always want to do what you want to do. Sometimes they think they know best, right? Now, the other thing here, uh, very aware of his surroundings. That means they're kind of nervous, right? They're looking around all the time like, hey, hey, what's going on? Should I get somebody? Say, don't he need me to go fetch something or he need me to go bite something? Like, I'm fine with either one. Um, and he's a good watchdog. Okay, good watchdog means that when he's at home and he sees people that aren't part of your family, or she in this case, they're going to put them over there into that shady person category, and they're going to bark at them and chase them and uh, bite them if the people don't get out of the way fast enough, right? All right, so I'm going to end here with this, this quote that I think is a, a real apt description, and it's from Richard Walters. And what he says is when a game warden comes to your blind, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever will try to tear his arm off. A golden will lick his face, but a lab will show him where you hid the extra ducks or where the bag of corn is kept because a Labrador Retriever is an honest working dog, right? If you want a lab, you want just a compliant dog to go hang out with you and do whatever you're told, but also is willing to get in the truck and go home with somebody else and do what they're told at their house, okay, that's a lab, right? If you want a lab, if you want a Retriever that... Uh, is a, just a rock star athlete, okay, bonds really closely to you and maybe one or two other members of your family and makes a really good guard dog, okay, well then a Chesapeake Bay Retriever might be for you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the course, we're going to look at some obedience work, and then we're just going to go on an adventure and you can decide for yourself. Uh, and then put your comments below and maybe you guys can all talk and uh, meet up. And if you have a Chessie and you like them, you can show them off to all the people that uh, ask me questions. All right, let's go up to the uh, kennel. All right, well, let's double check and make sure that uh, Sugar's vocabulary and her base physical skills are up to standard before we head off to the farm for our adventure. Uh, <clears throat> as everybody knows, we use the same vocabulary on all the dogs. Come, let's go, hup, easy, wait, and stay. And we expect for them to be able to demonstrate their mastery of the, that vocabulary in a wide range of uh, physical conditions and environments. And it all starts right here on the exercise with small challenges course. Hup, hup, hup. Now, the great thing about these chassis is uh, that you can really get a lot of repetitions per day in, them, in with them. And so, uh, for people that watch my channel, you know that I'm a big proponent of understanding TTV, um, what we call total training volume, okay? And so, you know, it kind of just means that in the dog business, ultimately, like the more volume that you get, uh, the faster you're going to get to your end goals, right? So with a dog like uh, Sugar, who's a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, extremely high energy level, high endurance, a uh, quick recharge rate, I can get a lot more repetitions per day than with an English lab like Hank. <laughs> so that's kind of a good thing, right? Well, uh, yes and no. Unfortunately, with the Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, you need more repetitions per day <laughs> because like, they're not quite as pattern cognizant. And uh, sometimes they're just out and out resistant uh, to being influenced uh, the way that you'd like to influence them. You know? And that's, you know, people are drawn to dogs for different reasons. And one of the things that you'll notice about uh, Chessies is when people talk about them, they like the fact that the the Chessies are a little bit kind of more independent. Uh, they have a little bit more of a willful nature, uh, that they're a little bit more aggressive. You know, I mean, you'll hear them, you know, people sometimes refer to them as a, the pit bull of the marsh, which that kind of always makes me crack up because it's like you're kind of one of those weird backhanded compliments, right? But now one of the things that uh, if you have a Chessie that you, you got to spend uh, some, some training volume on, okay, is uh, what we refer to as a physical uh, examination, you know. And uh, the reason you want to spend tons and tons of time uh, making sure that you, you know, do a cursory physical examination every day is because these dogs have a horrible reputation with veterinary staff and groomers, okay. And uh, the same things that make these dogs like, you know, kind of good if you want a retriever that's also a little bit of a family protection dog or guard dog, uh, makes them not so good uh, to like treat ear infections or do dental work on. <laughs> so you want to make sure that every day you spend some time examining them. You know, feel their privates, feel all their joints, feel their belly, their chest, pick their foot up, go in between their toes, look in their ears, look at their big old teeth. Very nice, okay. And uh, trust me, guys. If you have a, you know, if you have a Chessie and you want your vet to like you and you want your dog groomer to like you, well, then do this every day so that when the dog gets there, you know, they're not growling and freaking out. 
Uh, and <laughs> if you don't want to go to that much trouble, then get you one of these. <laughs> right? I mean, this is the perfect juxtaposition. This dog here, right, is the exact opposite of that dog there, right? We can't get very much total training volume in with these Cavaliers, but we don't need to get much uh, total training volume in because they're so awesome to begin with. All right, well, Sugar's doing great, so we're going to head over to the farm and uh, let you guys see what it's like to just go on an adventure with the Chessie. Now, this is the advantage of being the master dog trainer. The master dog trainer rides a four-wheeler, and the cameraman walks backwards. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm going to give the cameraman a break, get off the four-wheeler, and I'm going to walk. And uh, hopefully, some of these dogs will come back uh, close to me so we can get them on the video and we can look at what it's like to adventure with the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Sugar! Come on! No name! So, what all do I have here? I have a Cavalier, two Black Labs, Finley and No Name, Jack Russell, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and I have two Australian Shepherds. And I only see, oh, there's one, Fred and Ricky, right? And that's from, uh, what's it from, Anna? I Love Lucy, from back in the 50s. Anna's also from back in the 50s. <laughs> And uh, so Anna come today to hang out, just came to do a dog lesson, and she found out we were going to the farm, so of course she wanted to tag along to the farm. And uh, we kind of bonded uh, while we were uh, talking at the kennel, because like people always come here and they ask me, they're like, hey Stoney, you know, what do you think about this dog trainer on YouTube, or what do you think about that dog, or did you see the dog video? Look, I don't watch dog videos, just like plumbers don't watch plumbing videos on the weekend, right? Uh, I watch van life videos because I have like this little fantasy about, you know, being, being having total freedom and going living in a van. And Anna actually like has a van and she's a nurse and she's retiring and she's going to go live in a van for a while. And we bonded over a video channel that we both love, which is Bob Wells Cheap RV Living. Not very many people know about that uh, channel. So like if you're interested in van life, that's the best one. Uh, but anyway, so we kind of bonded. So she's going to kind of come over here and hang out with me. So we get out of the truck. And I'm like, well, come on, let's go for a walk. And she, she left me. She don't want to be on camera. She's like, uh, she's like behind, standing behind the cameraman. And if you go watch Bob Wells' channel, you know, you'll see that he like talks to people. He gets in, he talks to them, and they talk about their, you know, how they're living in their Prius or how they're living in their box truck, right? And the whole point of the video is him interviewing them. So I was going to interview Anna, and uh, she got all shy on me for some reason. And I've known a bunch of nurses in my time, and. Uh, I can't say that any of them have been shy, so I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, back to these dogs. Like, look, guys, this is basically what goes on. I got a bunch of dogs over here, and they're running around, and we always have to try to figure out, uh, like, does a, does a given kind of dog fit in, right? And uh, so normally what you're going to expect is that the retrievers stay a little bit closer than... than uh, like the terriers, I got a terrier that's run off. I got a spaniel, what's a spaniel bred for? So a terrier's bred to run off, chase, kill stuff. Spaniels are bred to go off and find birds. Herding dogs stay pretty close. So these two Australian shepherds, I don't anticipate they're gonna go very far. They'll go a little ways though, right? Because like they just haven't been out very much because Anna's kind of afraid to let them off the leash. And so when a dog doesn't get much off leash time, the first few times they get it, man, they really make use of it, but they'll calm down pretty quick. And the labs, of course, uh, the retrievers, they're bred to do a job in conjunction with animals, so they're gonna stay close. So the one we're interested in, here, turn around, all the way around here, cameraman, so you can see them. Just point over there towards the Chessie. Off in the distance there is the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And uh, they're like, uh, they're strange. They're a little bit of a strange dog if you're used to working with labs because uh, they have a little bit more, a little bit lower threshold at which they become aroused, okay? And they definitely are kind of, come on, come on. And they're definitely kind of on the uh, suspicious side, right? So if they meet somebody new, they're like, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing here? You know, and uh, so you got to watch that when you take them out and you go adventuring with them because they'll have a tendency to growl and snap at people. And they're really intolerant towards other dogs. Like you can be out in a field with a bunch of labs and throw in a retrieving item and uh, they might growl and gruff a little bit, but very few times do they bite anybody. Uh, that Chessie, if anybody gets after her retrieving item, uh, first thing she does is bites them, you know. So you got to be real careful with uh, 
kind of who you who, who you put them around. Now this is a good comparison size wise. Now sugar is a female and no names a male of course. And so we can kind of watch them run. And you can watch sugar's got him a little bit on like athleticism, right? She's a little bit more explosive. She's a little bit faster. Uh, probably has just a teeny bit more endurance, you know. And that's I'd say that kind of holds true for labs versus chessies. The chessie people always like to brag about how you know strong chested their dogs are and how they can bust through ice and how they can carry bigger geese and stuff. And I'm not going to argue with any of that, you know. I mean, I'd say it's true. Uh, the only thing really that you have to watch out for, obviously, with the chessies is man are they high strong i mean they just get tore up about stuff if you try to leave like right now if i took no name up back over to the truck and i told him to stay it really wouldn't take me any time or energy to to get a lab to be able to stay by the truck and be nice and calm and quiet and these chessies they're always always complaining about something and they make the weirdest noise when they bark which makes it kind of you know kind of weird for a for doing trying to board a bunch of them you know but look, as far as running around, look, watch. One of the things you can kind of see when she's running is if another dog gets ahead of her, sugar, come on. If another dog gets ahead of her, like she can immediately like change speeds and catch and surpass the other dog. Sometimes she'll turn around, spin around, like let them catch her, then run a circle around them, then take off running again. Okay, so what we'll do is they're, they're really interested in going to the creek. So we'll just walk on over here and get in the creek with them. And uh, that'll give us an easier background to see them. Now, somebody the other day was giving me a hard time when I was doing the brush pile challenge because they obviously hadn't watched tons of my videos, right? But I was having the dogs, you know, kind of climb up on the brush pile. And they were like, well, Stony Fair's fair. You should be willing to do that, uh, you know, without any shoes on. The implication being that I'm asking the dogs to do things that, uh, you know, kind of unfair to the dogs because I have shoes on and the dogs don't have shoes on. Well, look here. For all you complainers out there that think that I ask dogs to do things that I wouldn't do, I'll just go ahead and take my shoes off and I will do exactly what the dogs are doing, even though it's kind of cold out here. Now, you ladies don't get too excited when you see this leg. <laughs> I know that's exciting. All right. So, yeah, if you think I'm being kind of wimpy by rolling my pants up, I have to get in my waders here in a little while, and I don't want uh, to have wet pants and waders. And uh, Anna, my new friend from uh, Bob's Wells Cheap RV Living, doesn't want to see me in my skivvies. <laughs> Oh, all right. Woo! It's kind of cold. All right. Let's walk around here. Very good dogs. Now, I would say one of the things that surprises the you know people the most when they come out here is how well my uh, little girl, Jack Russell, does in terms of running around with these retrievers and uh, keeping up with them. Uh, well, listen, that's because Jack Russells are awesome. I mean, they're just really good at pretty much everything. Come on, dogs. Very good dogs. But the only thing I, you know, the only thing I'm really worried about, again, when I have Sugar out, let me get her back over here. Come on, Sugar. The only thing I'm really worried about, as far as her keeping up with the other dogs or doing stuff, is just see this competitiveness right here where she kind of, uh, could you see that cameraman or did you miss it? Did you see where she was running with uh, Fred and just decided to knock him over? Right? That's just, she's a bully, you know? And she's really fast. And if she starts to get tired or aggravated, she starts to get intolerant of the other dogs. So she would kind of be friendly and loving with them like, like a lab until she starts to get tired and then she wants her own space. And uh, then if they don't give her her space, well, she bites them, you know. And some dogs pay a steep price for being bit by a Chessie because a Chessie's a big, powerful dog. I've got an old beagle that stays with me named Ranger. And uh, he's kind of grouchy, too. And the other day, him and, 
him and Sugar were paddling around, you know, and uh, she got tired after a while and decided she wanted to be left alone and he came over by her, bam. She bit him and put a hole in his ear. Not that he didn't deserve it, but still, that's just something you gotta watch out for because, you know, like people that aren't in the dog business, they're not used to conflict like that. Now, here's a weird thing about this chassis. Come on, come on. <laughs> See how she's running around in the water like this? So when a uh, guy that owns her called me, emailed me, he's like, hey, Stoney, I got a chassis. I said, well, okay, well, you don't have to describe your problem because every time somebody contacts me with a chassis that's a young adolescent or young adult, then it's always doing the same thing, right? It's growling, barking, lunging, snapping at the neighbors, and just generally being surly, right? And surly is a good way to describe uh, uh, sugar. I said, but here's the question I have for you. How much are you exercising her? And he's like, well, I can't exercise her a lot because whenever I put her on the leash, she, bow she growls and lunges at everybody. And I said, well, where do you live? And he told me where he lives, and it turns out he lives right on a lake. And I'm like, well, look, why aren't you, why aren't you taking her swimming? And he's like, well, she won't swim. And I said, what? Because, like, that's the one thing Chessies are really known for, right? They're super powerful swimmers. But here's the thing, guys. If you have a Chessie and they don't want to do something, like, it, <laughs> sometimes it can be real tough to get them to do stuff. And so, like, just getting them to understand that you'd like for them to go swimming is one thing, and then telling them that they're going to go swimming is another. If you can ever get them to swimming, then they do great. But, so, uh, my buddy Mark, who owns the dog, come on. He couldn't get her to go swimming, you know? So I brought her over here, and we've got a little swimming hole up there where we practice with all the dogs. Uh, she wouldn't get in it, right? So I'd throw a little retrieving item in there, still wouldn't get in it. And uh, so we started bringing her down here and just walking her down the creek. Come on, sugar. Just walking her down the creek and getting her to where she was kind of, uh, you know, cool with walking and chasing and standing in the water. And then uh, after that, the next thing you know, like we started throwing retrieving items into the uh, swimming hole, letting the mentor dogs get it. So the, the combination of a little bit of desensitization to the water via walking through the creek and uh, the competitive nature of a Chessie, watching the mentor dogs get in there and chase the retrieving item, uh, then she was off to the race of swimming. So that's what we'll do next. We'll go up and uh, we'll get in a swimming hole a little bit and uh, we'll see how she swims like and see if we can't get her to fetch a little bit because sometimes she won't fetch at all and sometimes she'll fetch but she won't let it go. So I'm kind of interested to see how that compares to the Labrador Retrievers. All right, now, so what we're going to do here, oh, we're going to go down my little waterfall, and we're going to get in the water, and uh, this right here was our big impediment, guys, just getting uh, this dog to get in the water. Hey, as soon as I made her get in the water, uh, or as soon as she realized she wanted to get in the water, then it was hard to keep her out. Now, so you say, well, Stoney, if it's hard to keep her out, why do you have the leash on her? Well, I have the leash on her, because if I don't have a leash on her, uh, when I throw the retrieving item, because of all these other dogs, she's going to get out of the swimming hole and uh, run off and find her a safe spot to chew up my dummy. You can see, this is what she did the first time that I tried to throw the retrieving item without, uh, without a long line on her. She took it off and ripped a big old hole in it. So we'll go down here uh, and get in a good light so we can kind of evaluate Ah. The dogs, oh, like uh, the way she behaves in the water and whether or not she likes to fetch. So, like remember I told you that uh, this dog's owner was like, well, Stoney, she, she won't go swimming. I was like, well, what about fetching also, you know? And he's like, well, she, to fetch, she goes and gets it, but then she runs off with it, which is what we've run into. And if she doesn't run off with it, like if you try to play, oh, if you try to retrieve with her in a, like in the house or something, A, she's too big and she'll tear your house up, but B, all she wants to do is tug. And that's something else you'll notice with these chessies a lot. Like people will email me and they'll be like, hey, Stoney, I got this chessie and it goes and gets stuff, but it won't, it won't let go, right? All right, well, we'll talk about that too. So let's just get over here. Now this is what I'm going to have to watch out for. As you see this Australian Shepherd kind of running around over here in the water with us. Uh, if, it gets over, if it gets over by Sugar and tries to get a retrieving item, then she's probably going to give him a whooping. And uh, his mom's probably going to start crying. So if you hear, <laughs> if you hear wailing in the background, it's because, uh, <laughs> 
and is crying because Sugar whooped uh, Ricky. Is that Ricky or Fred? Yeah, Fred. Fred. I get them confused. All right, so here we are, long line and retrieving item. Goes and gets it. Now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to steer. Now look, you see, I wish you guys could see the look she just gave. <laughs> she just gave that Australian Shepherd. I might have to get that Australian Shepherd out of here in a second, just for <laughs> just for his own safety. Good girl, Sugar. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Sugar. Come on, come on. She's a very good dog. Now, so like she's kind of hesitant to come back over this way again because all these dogs are around. You know, she's like, Stony, if I come over there, you're either going to take the retrieving item away from me or one of those other dogs might get it. So we're just going to play real close, just like I did with that lab in the video yesterday or day before. Come on, you can do it. There's very few problems in the, in the dog business that can't be solved with judicious use of the long line, right? So what I can do with the long line is I can keep this dog from taking the retrieving item and running up there and tearing it up. And I can also make her let me have the retrieving item when she comes back because I've got her by her neck. And as I always say, if I can get a rope around your neck, then I get to be in charge, right? Now, <laughs> listen, dude, you're for sure trying to... <laughs> this dog has a death wish, right? Hopefully we'll be able to keep him from dying today. Come on, sugar. Come on, come on. Come on, you can do it. You're a very good dog. Oh my gosh, you're a very good dog. You're a very good dog. Now, right here, see, she just a little bit, she wants to tug on it. And when she sees me reach down there to get that long line, she realizes, well, I'm gonna have to give it up anyway. So I might as well give it up now. Very good, sugar. Come here. You a smart dog. Now, what I want her to do is I want her to realize that voluntarily giving me the retrieving item is what drives the game. Now, remember I was telling you about athleticism? I would have been able to get away with that throw with the average lab. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to jump up in the air and snag that retrieving items quite so quickly. Is that too far, cameraman? Now I'm going to back up to where it's just a little deeper water. Good. Come on, come on. Very good dog. Very good. Now right here, I want her to let go, right? And then that drives the game. And you might notice that I'm not, I'm not putting any rules on retrieving right now, okay? I'm not like like telling her anything. I'm not bossing her with any words. I want her to understand the conceptual framework of this game. It's a cooperative game where I will throw it for her if she will hand it to me politely. I can put rules on it later, but I just need the conceptual framework in the beginning. Now, a real neat thing about the long line is after you've used it a few times, you start to be able to just kind of let it drag. And then every session, you end up having to grab the long line less and less. And then when you can go through you know, a few sessions in a row where you don't even have to drive it one, grab it one time, then you know that you don't need it anymore. Now see, I obviously still need it because right there, she was gonna take my retrieving item and she was gonna go over there and get under a tree and guard it against the other dogs while she used her front teeth to shred it into a million pieces. Very good. Now, in most of the videos where you guys uh, see me working with the labs and stuff, I recommend like keeping your retrieving sessions short, like somewhere in the three to five rep range, okay? Some dogs, dogs that have a lot of endurance, dogs that have a tremendous amount of drive, then you can get more repetitions per session. Get that dog. Now see, there she goes. She goes to get going away. And you might say, well, Stoney, is she getting fatigued? Is that why she's wanting to go away? No, she'll do this over and over and over again. It's just that she literally wants to go tear this up more than she wants to play a cooperative game of fetch. And so I'm not gonna punish her for that. I'm just gonna change the rules around to make her understand that like that's not how the game works. I'm not in the business of throwing stuff for her to take and tear up. I'm in the business of playing a game where I will throw it for her if she will bring it back to me and hand it to me politely. Very nice. Now, this is, uh, she's been with me about two or three weeks. And this is a dog that 
you know, wouldn't get in the water when we first started, and she wouldn't fetch, okay? And what I mean by she wouldn't fetch is she wouldn't play the game cooperatively. So if you have one of these chassis and you, you know, due to COVID or whatever reason you couldn't get out and get around, and you're trying to play catch up, then you're gonna expect to see some of this uh, behavior, and you're gonna have to be willing to put in some remedial work, okay? Now, if you're watching this video and you have a young chassis, start this game at eight weeks old and use an inductive retrieve and by the time you know the dog's a young adult, then you're going to have a nice finished retrieve. The dog's going to be 100% uh, educated as to what the uh, overall conceptual frameworks of the game are, and you're going to be able to refine it. And that's when you're going to be able to say, go back that way, or go over to the right, or go over to the left. You know. But if you let these dogs get into the adolescent uh, phase, and they don't have good impulse control and don't have good attention span, then what happens is they have so much drive that they literally uh, get themselves all worked up and they get in a conflicted state where they want to chase something but they don't want to give it up. Uh, we call that the, the, the have your cake and eat it too problem, right? They, they, you know, like you have a little kid with his birthday cake, he can't wait to get a piece of his birthday cake, but like then he cries when the birthday cake is gone. Well. These dogs here, they have a lot of drive and they have uh, kind of a, you know, that tenacious personality. If you don't start your retrieving drills until they're adolescents, then they're in a conflicted state the whole time and you'll have to like do a lot of remedial work like this. If this dog would have started my program when it was a baby, then we would be up in the field using the dummy launcher right now, you know? All right, well, so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, how a mid-adolescent Chessie or young adult Chessie, uh, either one, anywhere in that age range, uh, acclimates to uh, swimming lessons and retrieving lessons, even though they don't have much experience. Now we'll just uh, go for a hike. Come on, sugar, this way. All right, count the dogs, Claire. How many dogs do we have? Two, four, six. That's an easy number to remember. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Oh, good girl, Sugar. So Sugar got up the hill just a little ways. Then she turned around and looked at me. So now I call her back. Sugar, come. Call her back. And uh, if she comes all the way back relatively quickly, I might throw in a high value treat to the mix. And you'll notice that the dogs that have been here hanging out with us longer, like say my dogs, I don't have to give them treats because they don't go anywhere. Okay, well our camera messed up for a second, but now we're back on track. Okay, so there's Australian Shepherd. Very good. Come on, Sugar. Oh my gosh. Sugar comes, checks in. Oh, and here's Finley. I haven't seen Finley in a while. What has Finley been doing? Do a good dog, Finley. All right, let me see. Two Australian Shepherds, one Cavalier, one Jack Russell, and two Black Lab. Oh, he's a good dog, Finley. You're a great good dog. Now look at that little cavalier still out here just hunting and hunting. She has been going all day. There's my man, no name. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Very good dogs. Now, you go back to some of my other videos where we're walking up here in the wintertime. Hey, it's way easier to start your dogs off hiking in the wintertime because there's not near as many smells, not as near as many interesting things going on. In the springtime, listen, that's, well, basically it's like this. In the wintertime, you don't want to go hiking, right? So you find any excuse not to take your dog hiking. Then all of a sudden, the weather gets nice and you decide, wow, I'd like to go for a hike. Then you go for a hike and you wonder why your dog doesn't stay with you. It's because they don't have any practice. And not only do they not have any practice, but the distraction level between wintertime and springtime is exponential, right? Is everything's alive during the springtime. Everything's got like a lot of energy. And that energy, uh, it flows right out of all these plants and wild animals right into the dogs. You know, if you, if you have a young dog in the springtime, you go on your first hike, you're going to see a lot of youthful exuberance. And so don't, uh, you know, don't get upset and, uh, you know, like don't that big we were talking about this man anna earlier uh you know her when she first got here like she was giving the dogs like a lot of like she, she was super happy to see them so they were pretty happy to see her and like everybody's licking and it's crazy right 
Well, like that's, that's what springtime is like, right? Everybody's been like hibernated for the winter and then you get out and you want to do all the living that you haven't been doing for the last couple of months, okay? So do not get frustrated when you're with your dogs on your first few hikes of the year because everybody's super happy, you know? And the weather's perfect. The weather's absolutely perfect. Like if you go hiking in July with a dog in the daytime, they get tired very easily. So you don't have to worry about them running off. But out here like today, it's like 50 something degrees and they can go all day and so you know if you'll notice we did quite a bit of running in the creek and playing and swimming uh, before we started hiking if i would have got right out of the truck and come right up into the woods it would have been a lot harder to manage these dogs um, a lot of dog training guys really it, the training's here or there right it's not that much uh, not even that important uh, the training will take care of itself if you manage your dog's energy regulation properly and you get out and you get them tons and tons of environmental socialization People really underestimate the value of pre-fatiguing sessions, you know. So, like when we come to the farm, we'll get down and uh, like really spend a lot of time running, playing, chasing, uh, chasing the ball, playing frisbee, just doing a lot of neat things to burn off that initial burst of energy so that it doesn't get burned off running down these gullies. Because what happens to you sometimes, especially with these suburban dogs, is they'll run down this gully and they don't know they can get up, right? Then I got to go down there and get them and bring them up. And then they go, oh, wow, that was easy. And I'm like sweating and, and about to die. And I'm like, yeah, it was easy, nerd. You know, why'd you make me do it? They're like, well, I didn't know. You know, and ain't that a lot of things in life? You just don't know what you can do. Especially nowadays, you know, people are like kind of encouraged not to get out and test their limits. And at my kennel, listen, we're testing limits every day. You know, like in, in, in the words of the uh, great, late, great uh, Louis Simmons, we're setting personal records every week. That's our goal. Every week at the kennel, I want to have to give these dogs like less treats, less oversight. And my training strategy is based on developing dogs that make good decisions. I'm not coming out here and going hiking and on my hike wanting to boss my dogs. That's the last thing I want to do. I want to come out here, take a hike, trust the dogs to make good decisions. That way we can all enjoy ourselves. Very good dogs. You'll notice I'm not even having to practice calling the dogs because they're not going too far. And if the dogs don't go too far, then like I'm not going to micromanage them. Just like children. You know, if you raise your children right, you don't have to micromanage them. Good. A good society doesn't need much in the way of rules. And we've kind of lost sight of that simple fact. If they do start getting too far away. Hey dogs! And kind of the deal I make with them is look, I wouldn't have called you back if it wasn't important. And that's why they run back so fast. Sometimes you'll hear me, like when I'm calling dogs, you'll hear me when we're out on hikes, uh, talk about the dogs like putting coins in the freedom meter, right? Like, you know, my analogy is you go to the car wash and you hear that noise, you gotta run over there to the car wash and put more quarters in it to buy more time. Well, when I call these dogs, basically what they're doing is they're running over here and they're checking in. They're saying, hey, what you want, boss? What you need? I'm like, I don't need anything, just checking on you. And they're like, okay, can I have a few more minutes of freedom? I'm like, sure, go have a good time. Very nice dogs. Now, I don't really need them back, but you guys probably can't see them. So I'll call them back just so you guys can see them a little better. Come on, dogs. Come on, sugar. Oh, my gosh. Now, oh, there we go. I was just fixing to make the point that Fred or Ricky, which one is it? Fred is red. Fred is red. Fred up there. Like, you see, he's a little lackadaisical yep. on coming back to me. Uh, now, watch. This other dog will probably go right to that same spot. And if I had to guess, there's probably some deer poop up there. Dogs love deer poop. Like, listen, whatever treats that you're carrying around in your pocket, like, it ain't as good as deer poop. <laughs> uh, the only thing that runs a close second is uh, goose poop, right? So people that live on golf courses, like, they freak out because their dogs are always following the geese around. And the geese are like little Pez dispensers of treats, and it's really, really gross. But the dog business is kind of gross, so what are you going to do? Okay, so, uh... My timer just went off, so we're gonna have to turn around. I'm gonna have to go down the hill uh, because the cameraman is now out of time. So cameraman, can you walk backwards or do? Very nice. All right, that's probably gonna be too much for the cameraman, so I'll just walk past you. What 
you think, Finley? You want a treat? You've been a good dog. What do you think, Ricky? Show them down in here, cameraman. See the, this little runoff? A lot of times, the smaller dogs, they'll go down that little runoff there and get over that log. And uh, that's when they, they come back to the log and they'll look at me like, Stony, Stony, what do I do? And you know, all you gotta do is go down there and show them a couple of times and then they're, they're gully climbing champs. But that first, first time or two, they freak out. Luckily, I usually have George with me and uh, I can pawn off a lot of that going and getting them on George. Dora, 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 the Explorer. Oh, it's a very good dogs. Very smart dogs. And see how these dogs are all kind of starting to gravitate, uh, you know, more towards me and like not range as far. That's what I was talking about, you know, when I was talking about proper energy regulation. Like, you know, when we first got into the woods, all the smells and, and uh, you know, all the sounds was, it like got them real hyped up and excited, right? But I knew that I had spent most of their energy out in the field and in the creek. So once the new wore off the situation, they all kind of glommed back onto me and started uh, following me around a lot better. So plan your routes, guys. Plan your activities. Don't just get out of the car. You know, I mean, because I know a lot of you, you don't all have your own, like, little dog park or whatever. So I know a lot of you kind of got to go someplace. You got to go get in the car, you know, like get all your supplies, your pack, get everything loaded up, and then drive someplace to go hiking, you know. All I'm telling you is that when you get to the parking lot, wherever you're going hiking, like instead of just headed right out on the trail where there's going to be a lot of people and lots of other stuff, you know, spend some time, like, in that general area, and play a little fetch with your dog, play a little chase with them, let them smell around, let them, you know, burn off some of that uh, energy that's kind of saved up from being in the car for so long. You know, burn off some of that energy and it'll be a lot easier to manage once you actually get into the woods. Even with a tired dog, even with a tired dog, when you first get out of the car, then they're gonna, they're gonna kind of go crazy a little bit, okay? And don't fuss at them. This is a big mistake people make. Like they get out of the car, they head right to the trail, and then they're like, here, come here, Ricky, Freddy, get over here, sugar, right? Well then, like the dog's in a, like, a, like already kind of overloaded with uh, you know, all the sights and smells and, and environmental stimulation, and then you start like adding to the mix with your own panic and your own bad vibrations you know if you want to be a good dog trainer you got to learn to you got to learn to send good positive energy out into the world you got to be confident you know i've said this in other videos uh there are some people that come to the kennel and they're like hey stony can i go can i go hiking with you i'm like no way no way you're making me nervous and we're just in my driveway of course i'm not taking you walking where i could lose half a dozen dogs oh Cameraman, give him a shot over here. This will be the last time of the year where you guys can kind of see our little valley because the next time we're out here, uh, there'll be leaves on all the trees. That's kind of cool. Oh, there goes Hunter. He's after. Look, see, here's a deer trail, and there goes the Jack Russell. And so I might be able to get him back or not. We'll just keep walking. Well, you're gonna walk there and see if they come back? There we go, good. Now, I don't know if that shows up on the, show them down there, cameraman. I don't know if that shows up on the, on the video camera or not. You say it won't show up? Okay, like, but there's a, there's a deer trail, you know, that goes down there and it winds around um, up to that spot we go to in the other videos where we're kind of, we can see the river, you know. Sometimes, like, <laughs> you know, you have a dog like Hunter, he'll go down that little trail and we can't find him till we get back up to the top of the ridge, you know. But I know he ain't going far. And that's just a terrier for you. You know, you all, another thing to take into account, not just the, like the energy regulation when you go on hiking. What kind of dog do you have? You know, because sometimes like you'll go hiking and you'll wonder why your dog run off, but you have a beagle uh, or you have a foxhound. You know, if you have a hound, what's a hound bred to do? They're bred to put their nose on the ground and run off and make noise while you come find them, right? If you have a bird dog, what's a bird dog bred to do? A bird dog is bred to run off and find birds and stay there until you come find them, okay? So don't be so mad at the dog for a uh, choice you made, you know?
Come on, sugar. That's why it's hard to beat for just every, you know, just, just regular life. It's really hard to beat a good retriever, you know, because a good retriever pals around with you and they're always looking to do something with you. Like, they might go off a little bit here and there, but they're going to go find a, they're going to go find a, like a, like a stick or they're going to go find a ball or they're going to find something like that and then they're going to come find you, right? Okay. Hey, Fred, where are you going? Come on, dude. Now see like right there where this is why it's so important to have like proper vocal inflection, proper posture as it relates to talking to the dogs. Dog needs to know, Fred, come on, uh -uh. come on. Dog needs to know when you're serious. Uh, and a lot of times when you're trying to sound serious, uh, especially when you're on a hike or you're in the woods, you end up just sounding panicked, right? Okay, and uh, I'm in no way panicked and I really don't care what Fred wants to go do there. It's just, I'm out of time. And this happens to you when you're on your hike too. You'll be out just having a good time. And uh, before you know it, it's late and you gotta get back. You gotta get back, pick the kids up, or you gotta get back and get to soccer practice, whatever it is that you gotta do, you know? So it's very important to be able to communicate to a dog that uh, something is, you know, something is important. And remember that there's a difference between important and urgent. So like, don't, don't sound urgent when something's just important. Very good dogs. Come on. Very good dogs. Now another thing that you'll notice when you first start your spring hikes, uh, again, pent up energy. A lot of times you didn't do the, the, the pre-hiking work that you should have done in the winter. And when you come out, the dogs will get running a little too fast, a little too, 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 uh, um, a little too erratic and they'll get like in these areas here, where there's lots of sticks and there's lots of loose rocks and kind of be prepared for them to have a few wipeouts your first uh, couple of hiking sessions, you know. And if you're not uh, familiar with dog first aid or injury management, then that's something that you ought to definitely check into. Um, put it in the comments below if you want me to do a first aid series because I guess I could do that for you guys, right? And then we come out of the woods and uh, we're just back out in our uh you know in our in our green area here and this right here this is where you know i like to really run them and uh, make sure that they get tired before i head up to our bluff and if i have a dog that's uh, like super athletic like i've got a you know a german short hair pointer at the kennel and i'll probably bring her out here tomorrow she has so much energy that i'll probably literally just take the four-wheeler and make a bunch of laps around this field uh and, 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 and really pre-fatigue her a lot before I head up the hill because if I don't and she gets on uh, some game up in, that, uh, up in our hollers, then she can move so fast for so long that she could easily get away from me. So I don't want to, uh, to pretend like I'm some kind of magic and like, uh, you know, this, the dogs will never leave me. It's not that. It's just that I manage the dogs properly and I don't put them in positions to fail. All right, guys. Well, listen, this video ended up being about a lot of things, uh, but while I was talking about various dog things, uh, you kind of got to see how a Chessie compares to a Labrador Retriever, um, a Jack Russell Terrier, a couple of Australian Shepherds, and a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And this right here is what you're going to see out of these dogs all the time. They always have a stick. They always have something they're gnawing on, you know. And that's the last thing I guess I'll tell you about Chessies is they are they're tough on beds and tough on toys, right? And so if you don't want to spend a fortune on uh, toys and beds, then spend a lot of time exercising them because there's an inverse relationship between exercise and any type of displacement behavior like barking uh, or tearing up your furniture or chewing on stuff. All right, guys, I'll see you all next week. All right, I, I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but uh, this is the point I was trying to make earlier about these chessies. As you see, she's got her retrieving item, and uh, like the other dogs went over there to get it, she gives out a low guttural growl, and with a lot of dogs, especially labs, they'll growl and kind of be a little bit grouchy sounding. These dogs here, like when you hear that low guttural growl come out of them, like if I, uh -uh, if I throw this for her, and, 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 and like she gets it and one of these other dogs come over, whereas a lot of dogs will give that low guttural growl like and tell the other dogs to get away. And if the other dogs don't get away, they'll just kind of do it again. And they'll just kind of be mad. Not these Chessies. These Chessies give that growl and if the other dog doesn't listen, then they'll bite them.
you know, and they're like, hey, listen, I ain't warning you, but one time. And I'm not saying that's true for every chessy, but it's true for enough chessies that if you're in the dog business, you know how hard it is to watch them. If uh, you like to do like um, open, uh, high socialization environment kennels like mine, which they're not a lot of, but <laughs> but that's that's a big problem with these dogs, you know. Another problem is by the time we get to the kennel, okay, this dog's batteries will be fully <laughs> recharged, you know. Like, so high energy, high endurance, quick recharge rate, and a little bit on the prone to violence side, but they're great retrievers, they're great athletes, they learn very quickly, and you can get tons of total training volume in with them. So, if you want one, uh, go get one. Of course, you know what I say, all dogs want to be labs, and all labs want to be black, so there's my opinion. Now I'll see y'all next week. Oh my gosh!